Administrative Groups Now if you're deploying a single exchange server in your company, then you might find this part of this video a little trivial as you really don't need in-depth planning for a single server. But once you get into installing multiple exchange servers in a large, geographically diverse organisation, then you'll need to think more carefully about your administrative and routing groups. Ok, so what's an administrative group? Well, administrative groups are simply containers which you'll create to group exchange objects that make assigning permissions and administering exchange much easier. Now, administrative groups can be used to manage public folders, system policies, chat and routing group containers. Now, before you run off and start creating administrative groups, you should spend some time planning which administrative group model that you should use. The three types of administrative group models are centralised, decentralised and mixed. In a centralised model you would normally only have one or possibly two administrative groups, largely because it's likely that exchange is managed by administrators in a central location, such as in a head office in a large organisation or a single branch organisation. Now a decentralised model would typically be used in a large organisation where you have a bunch of different branch office locations each with its own IT department. With a decentralised model, each branch could have their own administrative group. Now the last type, the mixed model, as it sounds is a combination of centralised and decentralised models, where some tasks are centrally managed and other tasks are handed out to the branch offices. Things like exchange policies could be managed centrally and managing the standard exchange administration tasks could be performed at each branch office. Ok, the first thing to understand when discussing administrative groups in Exchange 2003 is that when you first install Exchange 2003, it's installed in mixed mode. This is the default mode and it exists to provide interoperability with Exchange 2003 and Exchange 5.5 servers. This also means that certain administrative group functionality is not available when running in mixed mode, such as the ability to move Exchange mailboxes between groups. Now when you raise the functional level of exchange to native mode, then you have new options with your administrative groups. Firstly, you can move mailboxes between administrative groups. You're also able to move servers between routing groups, and these routing groups can also contain servers from different administrative groups. So let's go and change our functional level of exchange 2003 first. So in our exchange system manager, we'll come up here to our exchange organisation and we'll right click and we'll select properties. Now down the bottom here we can see that our operating mode is mixed mode, so if we do want to change this to native we'll come over here and click the change mode button. And here we just get a message that tells us that this operation isn't reversible, so make sure you really want to do this. Now I certainly do, so I'm going to click on yes. And now we can see that we are in native mode. Now getting back to our administrative groups, if you don't see any administrative groups in your system management console down the left hand side here, then you'll need to make them visible. And we'll do that by selecting to display administrative groups. Now while we're here, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the box above and choose to display our routing groups as well because we'll discuss that soon when we move on to that topic. And then we'll just click on OK. And now we'll just get a message which tells us that we do need to restart our Exchange System Manager to be able to view these changes, so we'll click on OK and then we'll close this down and we'll come back and we'll reopen up our system manager. OK, now we can see that we do have an administrative groups container, so what I'll first do is expand that and we can see here that we have our first administrative group. So these administrative groups can now be used to manage a collection of objects in one logical container. So let's just assume for the moment that this exchange server is in New York. In fact, what we'll do is we'll right click on our first administrative group and then we'll select rename and we'll rename this one to New York. Now we'll also assume that we're building another exchange server for our organisation but this one's going to be in London. So to make the management process easier, what we'll do is we'll create a new administrative group for London. So we'll right click on administrative groups and we'll select new administrative group. And now of course we need to provide a name so we'll call this one London and we'll click on OK. OK, so now you can see we've got two administrative groups of New York and London. Now even though we don't actually have a server in London yet, when we build one, what we can do is we can add it now to our test company organisation and then these two servers can be managed under separate administrative groups. Now the advantage of this is that we can now have two sets of administrators if we like performing tasks on these different groups. So using administrative groups is a good method of separating the management of resources. Now under our first administrative group of New York, we've got a couple of folders here. 
Servers is where we define which servers are part of our administrative group. Now over here we can see our default server which is server 01. The next one, routing groups, we'll discuss that in the next video on routing groups. And folders contains our public folders. Now these things are all covered in later videos, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip these for now and we're going to move on to our next video where we discuss routing groups.